Have the 49ers plans for the upcoming 2024 NFL Draft been leaked? We're talking about that on today's San Francisco 49ers report. Let's get into it. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome into the San Francisco 49ers report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. Hope all of your weeks are off to a great start. If you want a great sleep, make sure you do it with eight sleep. $200 off the pod cover in addition to free shipping. If you use that link down below, 8sleep.com slash chat sports, that link is hanging out down in the show notes as well as in the description of this video. So an interesting conversation that I want to have on today's show, have the 49ers draft plans been leaked? Are they leaning toward drafting a specific player? And has this information been leaked by their presence at a university over the weekend in the Pacific Northwest? And the great part about this story is, Seahawks fans were in shambles by this tweet right here from the University of Washington football team. They're known as the Huskies, nicknamed the Dogs, Dogs handshaking with the 49ers. And it was a photo of general manager John Lynch and offensive lineman Chris Forrester on hand at the Washington kind of pro day scouting some of their future potential draft picks here. And here's that photo of John Lynch general manager for San Francisco, and Chris Forster, who is the Niners offensive line coach, scouting some of these two-be professional players for a Washington team that won in the college football playoff semifinal in an epic game against Texas and then lost in the national championship that I was at against Michigan. And here's another photo of John Lynch here, just posted up, looking very comfortable, wearing the Washington Huskies hoodie. But of note here is that Lynch and Forster, while they were scouting a bunch of prospects who are going to talk about throughout this show as well, they stayed after to specifically work and watch Washington right tackle Roger Rosengarten, who protected the blind side for the left-handed throwing Michael Penix. And this is the same offensive tackle that ESPN NFL draft analyst Mel Kuyper has going to the Niners with the 31st overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft. I think on this show, we do a really good job of getting ahead of things and reading the tea leaves. And here's why this makes sense. Here's why this could happen. First and foremost, we know this. The Niners need to bulk up that offensive line. They need to fortify that unit. In particular, at right tackle, they need to upgrade there over Colton McKivitz, who last year gave up damn near 50 pressures according to Pro Football Focus. As far as scheme fit goes, Roger Rosengarten is a mobile offensive lineman who can climb to that second and third level. He's good out in space, has scheme familiarity with some of the concepts that Kalen DeBoer ran last year with Washington with what Kyle Shanahan also has implemented within the Niners offense. Rosengarten was really good in 2023. He did not give up a sack. He is young, a little bit raw, but talented, and he could be a developmental piece for the Niners, where if he's not ready to go year one, you have that insurance policy in Colton McKibbitt to you at least know what he is at this point, right? And at the very least, he's played a lot of football. And then of note here, too, is that Rosengarten grew up in Colorado, the number two overall recruit in the state in his recruiting class, and he played for Christian McCaffrey's dad, Ed McCaffrey in high school. Here's what Mel Kuyper Jr. had to say in his mock draft write-up. I'm going to stick with my projection from mock draft 3.0 as Rosengarten could challenge Colton McKivitz for snaps at right tackle. Did not allow any sacks in 1,158 pass-blocking snaps for the Huskies in 2023. Also has some familiarity with one of San Francisco's stars as Christian McCaffrey's dad, Ed, a former All-Pro Super Bowl champion, was his high school coach for two seasons at Valor Christian in Colorado. When I scout Rosengarten, there's a lot of good. There's some bad. We could get to all of it here. Good size, 65308. Very fleet of foot and fast for his size. He ran a 4.9240 yard dash at the NFL Scouting Combine. That was the fastest 
among all offensive tackles in Indianapolis. Those light basketball feet allows him to get out in space and move very fluidly. Has good hands to block and finish. Packs a powerful punch. He's a good climber, which in addition to getting to that second and third level in the ground game is also good in the screen game. Again, Kyle Shanahan really likes to have that as part of his offensive scheme with that outside zone. Rosengarten has been a very durable player, started all 28 games over the last two years. Not a huge lower frame, so because of that, he can lose balance at times and sometimes get uprooted by some edge rushers who get some good leverage and have some good bend. Should he have returned to school? That is a viable question here. I don't think he should go in the first round. I think he's more of a second-round pick. Mel Kuyper and his other mock draft even said if he returned to school, this guy could have been a top 10 pick potentially in the 2025 NFL draft, but he does have upside with some development. Now, it's not just Rosengarten who John Lynch and Chris Forrester were there to see, but I think it's notable here that they worked hand in hand up close with Rosengarten and Chris Forrester was there as the offensive line coach. They could have very well been looking at Troy Fuatano, who's a very good offensive lineman, played left tackle last year for that Washington team, probably is better sliding to the inside because sometimes he has a propensity to give up inside moves. He's a good prospect who's going to go in the first round. Michael Penix Jr., we know about him as a quarterback, was terrific the last two years for the Huskies after transferring to the Pacific Northwest by way of Indiana, where he played under Tom Allen. Very good COVID season in 2020 before he got hurt in 2021. Roma Dunze, borderline top 10 pick at wide receiver. Jalen McMillan, Jalen Polk, the other two wide receivers who fell under the radar for that Washington team because Adunze was so good. Their second, third round guys, Braylon Trice, day two, day three pick at Ed Rusher. That could be a niner pick. Dylan Johnson as a running back, late rounder. That would make some sense for San Francisco. Ediguan Olufushio, linebacker, Devin Colt, the tight end. I saw him at the Indianapolis airport. My man is huge, and he ran a sub 4-5, 40 yard dash. And then Dominique Hampton is probably a day three pick at the safety position. So those are other Huskies who are probably going to be drafted at some point in the NFL draft. Some obviously guaranteed to be drafted. Others could be on the outside looking in as priority UDFAs. But there's just more buzz around Roger Rosengarten. This is from social media. This is from John Lynch and Chris Forrester specifically working with him. So have the Niners draft plans been leaked here? And what does Mel Kuyper Jr. know? I'll also say this. The McCaffreys know about the player here. And Ed McCaffrey is somebody who Kyle Shanahan has known for a very, very long time because his dad, Mike Shanahan, was the head coach of those Broncos teams that were winning Super Bowls when McCaffrey was an all-pro and as part of those rosters. And you can gather intel by simply reaching out to Christian and Ed and just gathering some information about the prospect. Is he legit? Should we take him at number 31? We really like him. Is he as good of an athlete as what people are saying? How does he translate to the NFL level? If you're subscribed to us here, by the way, on the San Francisco 49ers report, let's do a real one roll call. Type real one down in the comment section. I think our free agency coverage, we've knocked it out of the park. Our draft coverage has been great. Our daily coverage of the Niners, I believe, is just different and separates from any other content creators and any other channels here on YouTube. If you're with me, San Francisco, type real one right now. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that sub button as we approach 132,000 subscribers. As I mentioned a few moments ago, today's 49ers report is sponsored by Eight Sleep. What is Eight Sleep? Well, I'll tell you this. Sleep science shows that in order to sleep our best, our body temperature needs to drop in the early and middle part of our sleep and then rise in the morning. That's what the new pod cover will be able to do for you. It'll improve your sleep by automatically adjusting your bed's temperature based on your individual needs. The cover can be added to any bed like a fitted sheet, and it allows you and your partner, this is awesome, to cool or warm your side of the bed as low as 55 degrees and up to 110 degrees. I start my morning every day with either a cold plunge or a cold shower. I end my days with the sauna session, I love the cold and hot exposure. That's why I love 
the pod three, and that's why I've started to sleep so well. In addition to keeping you at the perfect temperature all night, the pod also tracks your sleep and health metrics. On average, pod users see their sleep quality improve by 32% after just one month on the pod. So this is a great deal for all of the faithful here. You can control everything from your smartphone, by the way, as we're about to show you. Head to 8sleep.com slash chat sports. That's 8sleep.com slash chat sports to get $200 off, plus free shipping on the pod cover by 8sleep. Invest in the rest that you deserve with the 8sleep pod. We're not done with the draft plans being revealed. Now let's go to part two of this conversation. Matt Mayoko, NBC Sports Bay Area, saying on his podcast with Jennifer Lee Chan that he would not be surprised if the Niners go wide receiver in round one or just go wide receiver early in the draft, earlier than anticipated. We're talking round one, maybe round two. And what May Mayoko said about the wide receiver spot does make some sense here. You look at the Niners' wide receiver room. They have Debo Samuel. They have Brandon Ayuk. Two game changers, two special players, two special talents, and they're game breakers, right? But there is a tremendous drop-off, Mayoko said, from Debo and Ayuk to Jawan Jennings. Jawan Jennings is a really good player. As far as overall ability goes and skill set goes, there is a drop-off from the top two wide receivers to that third wide receiver. But then... An even larger drop-off, in my opinion, from Jawan Jennings to everybody else. Because the Niners, behind their top three wide receivers, don't really have anybody. They could have used another legitimate one in the Super Bowl against Kansas City to answer what the Chiefs were doing defensively. They caused a lot of problems for San Francisco. But Chase, the Niners have Danny Gray! No, come on, get out of here with that. It's time for Danny Gray to put up or shut up. He's done Nothing in his first two years. Ran a 4 3 40 at the NFL Combine. Great. Has done nothing meaningful in his first two years since being a third round pick at SMU. It looks as though that was another swing and a miss for this Niners front office in that third round. Chase, they have Chris Conley. Did you see what he did in the playoffs? He is not a legitimate wide receiver for consistently for a team that has Super Bowl aspirations. Shout out to Chris Conley. Great special teams impact. In the Super Bowl, but look, if he's your wide receiver five and special teams contributor, that's okay. But he's been a journeyman for a reason. So could the Niners draft a wide receiver in round one? I think they absolutely could. I'm with Mayoko, and I've talked about this on the show plenty of times. Mayoko did mention by name Malachi Corley, wide receiver out of Western Kentucky. He is pretty much a Debo Samuel clone with the way that he's built, the way that he plays. He was top five in yards after the catch the last two years in college football, if I'm not mistaken. Really special player. And while I'm putting stock into this, Mayoko is very close with the Niners as an organization. He texts Kyle Shanahan. He has a relationship and is in the know with Niners general manager John Lynch. He is tapped in to this organization. And sometimes when people sprinkle some tea leaves out there, you need to follow some of the tea leaves. Depending on which round the Niners go with a wide receiver, there are a bunch of different targets and a bunch of different prototypes that the Niners could go with at the wide receiver spot, either in the first round or the second round. Round one targets here, and I'm not putting on Marvin Harrison Jr., Roma Dunze, and Malik Neighbors on this list because I think they all go top 15, and I don't think the Niners are going to move up inside the top 15 because the price is too much, and you can still get a legitimate player late teens, early to mid-20s, or at 31, and you won't have to give up as much as far as draft capital or trade away a Brandon Ayuk. Now, if you trade away a Brandon Ayuk, then you could trade up for maybe a Malik Neighbors. But they have some interest in Brian Thomas. We know that. A lot of size, a lot of speed out of LSU. He kind of fell under the radar playing alongside Malik Neighbors, but a very good player. I love A.D. Mitchell. He's one of my favorite players in this draft class. Fast, physical, great size, really good route runner, everything to his route tree. I think he ends up being the better wide receiver than the fellow Texas wide receiver, Xavier Worthy, whose size concerns me. He's under 170 pounds, but we know Xavier Worthy ran that 4 2 40-yard dash. If A.D. Mitchell, Adane Mitchell, 
is the second best wide receiver in this draft class. It will not surprise me one bit. If you want to go slot in the first round, Lad McConkey is very shifty, very fast. He will remind you of a Cooper Cup type of player. Round two wide receiver targets. Trey Franklin, the Niners met with him at the NFL Combine. He has some good speed and some good build to him. Keon Coleman ran a 4-6 40-yard dash but was fast in the gauntlet at the Combine and is a jump ball, go up and get it, climb the ladder type of wide receiver who just looks to have an NFL body. Xavier Leggett, shout out to Larry Kruger. I join him every Friday on his YouTube channel and then obviously we put those videos up on the 49ers report. He compared Xavier Leggett to A.J. Brown. I'd say A.J. Brown is a better vertical wide receiver and has better ball skills because he played outfield and actually was drafted uh, in the Major League Baseball draft. But Xavier Leggett, as far as the build goes and what he could become, could become an A.J. Brown type of player. Keep in mind, A.J. Brown out of Ole Miss got drafted in the second round. And then more round two targets here. Malachi Corley, he literally is a Debo Samuel clone with the way that he plays. Ricky Pearsall, fast, shifty, another slot wide receiver. Roman Wilson ran well at the NFL Combine. He's another slot wide receiver. And then Jalen Polk has some more size to him. He's more of a perimeter wide receiver as a burner. So as you can see there, just a bunch of different types of wide receivers that the Niners could go with in the upcoming draft. Do you want a tall wide receiver? You can check that off your list. Do you want somebody who's taller and bigger? You can do that. Taller, bigger, and runs fast. Do you want somebody who's shorter and is very shiftier? Um, all those types of prototypes are available in what is a very, very deep wide receiver class in the 2024 NFL Draft. And if the Niners do go wide receiver in round one, round two, does that mean that they're going to trade away Brandon Ayuk? or Debo Samuel, it doesn't necessarily mean that, ladies and gentlemen. You can keep this core together for 2024. And let's say you sign Brandon Ayuk to a contract extension, and you don't want to pay two wide receivers about $25 million per year each, $50 million total, then maybe you keep Ayuk, the wide receiver who you draft this year, becomes that number two. You extend Jawan Jennings at an affordable clip. Maybe you keep Ayuk and Debo. You get rid of a Jawan Jennings. That rookie takes over as your wide receiver three. There could be changes that come at this position in particular in 2025. Outside wide receivers, slot wide receivers. They are a plenty. It really comes down to what the 49ers are looking for. If they plan on moving on from Debo because the contract is too much this time next year, then I think Malachi Corley, if the Niners draft him, that signals the end for Debo, not this offseason, but next offseason potentially in a Niners uniform. Hopefully you were informed today. That's what we aim to do here on the San Francisco 49ers report. Which wide receiver do you really like for the Niners? We'll leave you with that. Leave us a comment. Leave us a review. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.